money-saving ideas. This is a demonstration on how to light the perfect fire in your wood-burning stove. One thing worth remembering before I really start and tell you how to do this is to make sure that you never really shut your door right up. It's best to keep the draft even when the, when the stove is not being used so that your draft up the flue is maintained. And this happens because in the house it should be warmer than outside, generally speaking, during the winter time at least, and therefore you'll have a good draft maintained before you've even started. It is possible for the draft to come the other way, so always remember just leave the door just ajar, open up the two controls or three controls, whichever stove you've got. This is fairly typical of most stoves, this is a clear view. Um, but it's not too dissimilar to, to many stoves. So that's the start. Okay, so we we'll start off by placing two logs inside. I've got one, two. These two logs should be put into a sort of V-shaped pattern. That is because you don't want to have a big kindling fire. It's not necessary. Just a small kindling fire will be enough to get this fire going. And also, behind the logs, you've got a bit of space. Because what you really need to get a fire going is oxygen. So the last thing you want to do is to cram loads and loads of stuff in there, and it exhausts itself before you've even started. So, first of all, take some rough paper, old envelopes from the mail that comes, old bank statements, anything you can get your hands on, but not too much of it. Just get enough to poke there at the front of the fire. Don't forget, paper makes ash, and fine ash will only clog the airways up too quickly. So, you've just got to have enough just to get it started. The next thing to have is good dry cardboard. Just cardboard boxes is fine. Just tear this up into small pieces. This is the thing that's more important than the paper. So you need plenty of that to kick off. And also make sure that your logs are dry. They've got to be tinder box dry and ready to go. So here we go, we get all this cardboard. This is going to be the thing that will keep it going long enough for that, those dry logs to take off. Plenty of it, because it won't turn to ash too quickly because it will allow the draft to start building up as the heat rises in the stove and wants to go up the flue. So we do that, bring that right the way down. The next thing to have is your kindling. Some people think you have to have lots and lots and lots of kindling. You don't, you just need enough of very dry little bits of wood. There we go. And then to follow up that, perhaps a little bit bigger, this as we go through, and then you get to this sort of size. This is perfect once it gets going. Still leaving plenty of gaps around for that oxygen to be drawn in. And then finally, another log on top. So, there we are. That's the way to build the fire in the first place. It's not particularly tricky, it's not difficult and doesn't have to be over-processed. So here we go. Give it a good light, get it all going at once, don't just rely on one piece. It's far better that the flame builds up right the way around that tinder box. And there she goes, she's starting to go. Make sure you've got all your controls on your stove open. We've got two controls, we've got a bottom vent and a top bend. Don't close the door too much of a hurry. It's got to have time just to establish itself. But once you feel it's going, make sure that um, it's, it, it's all starting to happen before you close the door too quickly, otherwise you can extinguish it. And also you want to keep this, this glass getting, getting a bit warmer. You don't want it to be freezing cold glass. Well, it's ceramic actually. You don't want it to be too cold when you actually shut the door. Okay, it's starting to get hold now. I've warmed up the glass. I can now close it up and you can see the draft is going away straight away. 
and the fire's starting to take hold. Now I'll just let you watch that until it's established itself. <laughs> 